Hey everyone, this is part three of my screen printing video series. And today I'm going to show you how to finally print our design onto fabric. There is one last component that I needed to build before I could print. And that was the platen and bracket set. This is to keep the screen in place while printing to allow for registration. The brackets I chose were not great because they didn't allow to, the screen to sit at an angled up position. The platen was the largest size MDF board I could get from Home Depot, which cost about $15. Next up was sealing the gap between the emulsion and the edge of the screen with tape. The book I'm using said to do this on the outside of the screen, but I've also seen people seal the tape on the inside part of the screen. Doing more prep work, I then did a rough registration by putting painter's tape along the top of the screen to align the fabric with. In video number two, I discuss measuring the pre-wash fabric width between selvages and taking that into account when designing the print. It worked out really well for me and made it easy to get a seamless transition between the two halves of the printed fabric. Registering for the fabric width was a little more difficult, but I marked the widest part of the design and taped off the bottom of the screen so I could move my fabric accordingly. I wanted to use this non-spray glue to hold the fabric in place, but for some reason it never got tacky. I ended up wiping it all off and using tape to secure the fabric. However, I'm going to show you how you would spread the glue out if you purchased a glue that works. Okay, on to printing. I'm following the directions from my screen printing book that I'll link in the description. The first step is to wet the squeegee with ink and flood the screen. You can see I didn't do a very good job flooding and it took a few attempts before I successfully flooded the screen with the right amount of pressure to move all the ink, but not force too much into the screen. I do think a screen with slightly smaller holes would work better. I'm currently using 140M mesh and next time we'll purchase 160M mesh. When actually pulling the ink, press down on the screen and do two passes to make sure the ink is pushed through the screen. Throughout the entire process, make sure your squeegee is held at a 45 degree angle. Since I'm using water-based ink, it's really important to flood right away after printing to ensure the ink doesn't dry in the mesh. You can also miss water over the screen if you're going to walk away for more than a few minutes. The ink needs to be dried before you can move the fabric and print another print. Otherwise, you'll transfer ink to the screen and then back onto the fabric in areas it shouldn't be. You can dry the ink quickly with a blow dryer. Lastly, once you're done printing and the ink is dry to touch, you can heat set the ink. Since this is water-based, I use an iron at the highest setting with no steam. You can see I ironed for quite a while. Once I was ready to sew my skirt with the fabric, I did use a scrap to send through the washer and dryer and it held up great. No fading occurred, so the ironing did the trick. If you're using a different type of ink, you'll have to look at the manufacturer's directions to see how to best set it without a heat press. I hope you enjoyed learning about the screen printing process. I know I learned a lot making this video series. 
and I hope it encourages you to create your own designs um, to put on your own fabric. If you like this series, please subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when my next video is released.